All right, everybody, welcome. This is a short session today. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to Larry right now so he can hop right into it. All right, thanks, Brooke. <clears throat> well, all right, hello, all. Uh, welcome to the session. Um, my name is Larry Stocks. I am the development manager here at GSI. Uh, we got a very quick session um, about calling orchestrations from uh, JDE application. Um, we are going to do that leveraging uh, B98 Orc business function. Um, uh, hold on. Let me get the next thing. All right. So uh, first off, again, my name is Larry Stocks. Uh, been with GSI for uh, 10 years now. Uh, been involved with JD development since 1997. Uh, managed uh, both the development team. Anybody the there? Hey, uh, Elmer, can you, Elmer, can you please mute yourself? Oh, sorry, sorry. Never mind, thank you. All right, so a um, few quick things that, uh, are, well, here, the only caveat to using this uh, B98 uh, or business function is you have to be on tools to release 923 or above. Um, starting with 923, um, E1 provides uh, a B98 ORC function uh, for invoking uh, orchestrations or notifications uh, from events in E1. Um, this allows developers to launch orchestrations in a variety of uh, places, such as table triggers, event rules uh, within a form, other business functions, uh, as well as UBEs. Um, so overall, this, it, this function is going to work pretty similarly to all the other business functions. So you'll see by the end, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but a, a, a few things I did want to show you a slide um, before we got into uh, my demo here. And, and it's just uh, design considerations um, when using this B98 ORC. So um, a lot of you may already know this, but we'll go through it for those that don't. Um, but if you call uh, directly from an event rule in an application, um, the B98 ORC function is executed on the HTML server, uh, where it then calls an orchestration or notification on the AIS server associated with that HTML. Um, now, if you call this function, uh, if you call it from another business function or a report, the B98 org is executed on the enterprise server, uh, where it then in turn calls an orchestration or a notification um, on that AIS server, which is also associated with the enterprise. So this is just something to keep in mind when you are um, you know, when you're, you're designing your process that you want to do, um, depending on, you know, if it's a report or a function versus an application, it's going to uh, launch from uh, a, a different server. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but now let me, that's all the slides I really have. So I'm just going to um, end that slide and jump over to my, uh, my demo here. <clears throat> All right, so since this session is, is pretty short, um, we've created a, a pretty simple process. Uh, the example we've done is we've customized the P01111 email address form uh, within the Who's Who application. Um, this is to allow users to validate uh, an email address while within that application. Um, it basically does a validity check within this button on the form that allows users to enter in an email address, and then they can press this button to validate if that email is a valid or invalid uh, email address. Um, and this check is done leveraging that B98 org business function, uh, calling that orchestration. So let me show you the, my, my orchestration real quick. Uh, very straightforward, as I mentioned. Um, so it the only component I have within this business function, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, within this orchestration is a connector. 
um, which is leveraging an API call out to a site that checks this validity uh, of an email address. So if I go within this connector, um, <clears throat> here's the API that I'm, that I'm hitting. Um, and this is an API out there strictly to check uh, and validate email addresses. Um, the parameters, I have an access key which is needed for the API, but notice that I'm also passing in a, a, a variable called email. Um, this is my input parameter that we're sending to um, our API call. All right, I have no headers within this uh, connector and our output, we have something called SMPT check. Um, this is the final piece. Um, this is the validity response from the API call uh, returned back to the orchestration. All right, so uh, pretty straight um, forward there. So now I am going to show you, uh, let me get to my fat client here. I just wanted to show you on the fat client, my uh, customization here. So this is the, the P01111 application. <clears throat> All right, so this is the, uh, the application here, and this is the email uh, internet revision screen. And if you notice, most of it looks just like it did. The only difference is up here, we modified it. Um, we have an email validation button and a field that a response comes back to. Um, so within this function or within this this button here, all we have is is one line of code, and this is this is the actual B98 ORC uh, business function call. Okay. So um, the first two parameters within this function are the only two that are absolutely required, um, which should be your orchestration name, and it needs to be exactly the same uh, name as your orchestration. Otherwise, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bomb. Um, your second one is a, is a type. And here's where you can do an orchestration or a notification. In our case, we're putting ORC for an orchestration, um, but you can change that again for, for a notification. But these are the two that are required. Um, Notice that there is a ton of variables that you can that you can leverage in here. Um, in our case, we only have one input going in and one output. So, um, so we're going to leverage the um, the first parameter here. And notice that each parameter has a name and a value. Okay, so the name of the field is what you are passing in. So this name needs to needs to match and tie out to your or what you're using in your orchestration. And it, within the orchestration, I have this email to check. So this has to be sent into the uh, parameter one name, and then the value one associated with that name, we're, we're leveraging the GC electronic address, which is uh, the, the field up in the grid here. All right. And that's what's going in. Um, now, we have one output returning back. And if you remember, uh, we mentioned that SMTP check. Well, that has to tie out as well. So that is exactly what we're using in our first output parameter for the name. And then our value, we're returning to the FC email validation uh, field, which is that uh, field right here. Okay. So, um, so now that now that that is all, we've gone through all that. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you it running. Uh, let me get to it here real quick. All right. I'm just going to go to the PO1012 uh, address book. Look for a customer. Oops. Yeah. 
it doesn't really matter which one. So I'm just I'm just gonna select any of them. All right. Oops, no, I don't. I want to go to row who's who. And then I also want to go from here and do another row and go to email internet. So we're going to act like we are entering in a email address uh, for this customer. And for now, I'm just going to type in my, my actual email address. It's valid. Um, now, so I, I entered that email into here. And just to test it out, we can hit this email validation <laughs> and notice it comes back as, as a true. So this is telling me that this email uh, address is valid. This screen or this button leverage the API or leverage the um, B90 ORC business function call out to my orchestration. It passed that email to uh, out to my API and that API returns a true false type scenario. Um, so just to show you that uh, I'll just put something, um, something incorrect here. Larry at Yahoo uh, hit that email validation and you notice that it comes back as false. That, that is not a valid email. So um, now this is where I kind of left it just due to time constraints, uh, real short, um, uh, session here, but I could have cleaned this up a bit and taken it a, a bit further. I could have changed the values to be more of a, a val valid or invalid, uh, you know, response versus a true false, which might not make sense to, you know, to, to users. Um, I could have automatically linked this call to the electron, the electronic email address, uh, event column. Uh, is exited. So when we entered this in and we, we either tabbed out of it or click save, it could have automatically pressed this button. Um, uh, another thing is we could have added error messages uh, related directly to the, the validity response. Uh, if, an e if, if an email came back as invalid, um, you know, we could have put a hard error uh, to prevent, you know, any from any bad data being saved by by users. Um, so, it, short and sweet. Um, like I said, it's just showing you how to use this B ninety eight org business function. Um, really doesn't uh, perform too much differently than other business functions. Uh, the majority of it is just understanding the parameters, which you know what's required. Um, and to, uh, you know, you can leverage all of those, those input and output parameters, as many as you have that that function can uh, handle. Um, but please note that those names, those parameters must tie from the orchestration to um, the parameters in that B98 org business function. So hopefully that was clear enough, but uh, that is, uh, that concludes my session. Uh, Brooke? Thank you, you so much, Mary. you need to add? No, no, I don't. There is a link in the chat where you can enter to win a $50 Amazon gift card for attending the session today. So feel free to go and hop over into the chat and click on that link. And then it's just a couple questions and then you can be entered for our drawing. Everybody will be selected by Friday of this week. Thank you so much, Larry. All right, thank you. Thanks, everybody.